Well, hello, and welcome to another tutorial CAD video. Today, we're going to make a worm gear that functions, and uh, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, if you've been following along in the series, we did a spur gear in a previous video and also a beveled gear. Uh, we'll use the same approach with uh, our worm gear here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Remember uh, to subscribe to the channel to watch more CAD tutorial videos in any software. Um, if you have some ideas for some videos, please leave a comment and we'll be happy to create that uh, content for you and get it posted uh, as quickly as we possibly can. All right, so step one in our worm gear process is we're going to start a new assembly. As soon as we start the new assembly, we're going to do a save as, and we're going to place this into its own folder, and we'll call it uh, temp worm gear. And we'll call this assembly temp worm gear. All right, once the assembly has been saved, we can go ahead and go to the design tab and over where our gears are at, we can go ahead and pick the worm gear. For today, again, remember the gear uh, generator is extremely powerful. We can change our gear ratios and a variety of other things in here. But for today's purposes, we'll just go ahead and use the defaults. We'll go ahead and pop the gears into our assembly. Okay, once they're here, we can go ahead and do a save. This will give us an initial save on the part files. All right, now it's time to go ahead and make our gear that will function. So we'll start a new assembly file. And in our new assembly file, we will go ahead and place the two part files that we just saved. From our temp gear, remember that they're in that subfolder temp worm gear design accelerator and then we can find our two part files there they are all right the nice thing about the main gear here is its origin plane is whoops that's not it its origin plane is in the center of the gear which is very helpful if that wasn't we could go ahead and make our own work plane uh, at the mid plane of this uh, solid here so we're going to constrain that plane to our assembly plane i have my predicted offsets on so let's turn that off and set that to zero all right so there it is for us. So it will now rotate, but it's also still able to translate. So let's go ahead and get rid of the translation. So we're going to find the axis through the center of the gear right there. And we're going to constrain that to the axis in the assembly. Now this gear should only have a degree of freedom or rotation for us. So that one is good. So that just leaves us the worm. Okay, the worm gear has a few built-in features as well. So we should have a center axis here. We're gonna take and constrain that center axis to our assembly 
plane. Okay, so now that's able to float around. We should also have a plane right through the center, halfway through the length of the gear. So we're going to constrain that to the central plane in the assembly. Okay, so at this point it should rotate, but it's still able to translate up and down. So we'll take care of that with our pitch diameters. So we'll take this gear and we'll open it up. We'll find in our surface bodies the pitch diameter and we'll turn its visibility on. And in this particular gear, we'll do the same thing. Open it up. Go into the surface bodies. Pitch diameter visibility on. Okay. So now we can see our two surfaces in here. We'll go ahead and use a constraint tangentially between the two pitches. Okay, that should stop that gear from translating. Let's go ahead and add a motion constraint on the two pitches. It changes our gear ratio. We'll check to see if it's spinning the right way. And it's not, so let's go ahead and change that. Okay. So we flip the solution on that motion constraint. And now we're in good shape. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is give something that makes this function a drive function. And the easiest way is going to be using the larger gear. We'll find a plane like so. And we'll constrain that with an angular constraint. We'll turn our predicted offsets on. And then we'll find a gear. Remember solution one on this. Okay, so it's at 122.97 right now, so we'll take that. And right in here, our angle constraint, we'll go ahead and drive that at 127, or 122.97 plus 360. And we can go ahead and hit the play button. And now we have ourselves a functional worm gear. Last thing I'll do is go back to my part files, turn the visibility of the pitches off. And while I'm here, we'll go ahead and add some materials just to give it some uh, color. Okay. Set our view up. And then we can rerun our drive. And we got ourselves a functional worm gear. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, please subscribe to the channel for more exciting videos like this. If you have any ideas that you would like in any of the major CAD softwares out there, uh, we'd be more than happy to generate them for you. Um, the next video that I'm planning on doing is going to be a planetary gear system. 
and we will be using dynamic sim to make that function it'll be a little bit longer format video but the payout is be well worth it i hope you enjoyed it and good luck in giving this a try